Thank you for joining us. Today we're talking with Sheriff Andy Schneider about our partnerships with local law enforcement. So tell us a little bit about how you interface with CVIC because we work with your team all day long. Yeah, so there's there's actually state mandates, state laws that require uh, jurisdictions to utilize services or provide services for victims. And CVIC provides a lot of those services for us. It, it really takes a lot of burden off of our shoulders and off of the state's, state's attorney's office shoulders as well uh, to provide those services to people that need them. Uh, for example, Sheriff's Office, we're benefactors of some of those services uh, when we're victims of assault or terrorizing. I remember the first time I was, I felt like I had a legitimate threat against my safety from an individual I arrested. And I got a letter at the office from CVIC figuring it was something about a case. And it was, it was about a case against me, offering me services. And it kind of caught me off guard, but it was really beneficial to see through that court process uh, all of the in information that I got as a victim, mm -hmm. that knowing that that was being provided to, to victims all over our county when we make arrests on other people. Absolutely. Well, and we couldn't do it without each other, right? I mean, yeah. that's, the, that's the truth. But tell me what you think, I mean, you've seen a lot in your almost 20 years now. Where do you think we'd be without, the community would be without the partnership? It's, it's really molded well over time and, and now like, I can't imagine going back to where it was 15, 20 years ago. The way that CVIC has been able to commingle with us, with trainings and not being overbearing, coming in saying, you will do this. Like, that's, that's not how our relationship is. Right. Uh, come in and talk about the services being provided, working with us as partners to develop forms and procedures to uh, make notifications for victims. Uh, the services that are being provided to victims out in the in the community, out in the county, the availability for them, and and just just how easy it has become for us uh, is so beneficial. I mean, you know, do we still respond to domestics? Yes, physical ones, yes, verbal, yes, but it seems like the recidivism is drastically improving because of the services that they have at their fingertips. I'm so glad to hear that. You know, my team talks a lot about those early days and. You know, this sort of these like red face meetings and it's like they don't get us and we, we don't get them and yeah and you know spending some time just doing some ride-alongs and right. I think a couple of them spent overnights in jail just to see what it was like and it's good for us to stay um, close to our partners in terms of understanding the day-to-day -day, what's really impacting y'all yeah and right now I mean right now it's a great relationship I feel like we have the right people communicating uh, in our office with the right people in CVIC and it just makes it a lot easier. Yeah, and we're gonna be, unfortunately, I think we're gonna be doing this work for a while now. So when you think about domestics and sexual assault, what are some of the trends that you would like to see shift the most? Cause you've seen a lot of these, I'm sure. Yeah, you know, social media is really tough right now all around. It's not just with, with teenagers and kids. I mean, 18 to 30 year olds. I, I get calls, unfortunately, from some friends, some acquaintances, friends of friends, reaching out in their, they're in their 40s, in their 50s, that are being subjected to some sort of, of sexual violence through a social media string. Some people start losing self-control, they confide in somebody that probably doesn't even exist in right. most times. Right, right. And, and now they're gonna be taken advantage and, and try to be financially drained you know, usually it comes comes along the lines of pictures, right? People are taking inappropriate pictures that are going to be exposed and, and they feel like they have no other option but to kill themselves. Yeah. Uh, it's just extremely unfortunate. And, and you know, and, and we do see that. I wouldn't say we see it a lot, but it's something that never existed a decade ago, right? Social media threats like that. Well, there's still a lot of work to do on the prevention side. We grew by 68% last year in our prevention education in the school system. And um, I just think that's where that's where this is going to shift, right? Yeah. It's going to be catching these kiddos early. Yeah, I, and I totally agree with you, Koya. It's, it's the same with recruiting. Right? <laughs> that's, that's, that's why we're trying to talk to kiddos to make sure that they trust law enforcement at the elementary level. Right. We let them know that we're nice people. You're, you're great about getting out there, and I think that's so important. And I guess I should also, while I have you here, um, really thank you. Uh, it was a couple of years ago I drug you to a meeting uh, with Chief Nelson and Haley and a few legislators that we had invited to kind of talk to them about 
with what we do and we were kind of pleading with the state to help us with some additional funding and you helped us with that. I'm curious why you think, you know, that state funding is so important because you see it play out every day. Yeah. I mean, I, I look at it from multiple perspectives, right? I see what CVIC is providing to the community and we wish that across the state, everybody could be up to the level that we are lucky enough to enjoy here locally in Grand Forks. You know, it kind of falls along the line of what the state's requiring us to provide here local, or well, statewide services we need to provide and looking at what it would cost, you know, county taxpayers to provide those services in-house is astronomical compared to what CVIC is able to do it for. And State requiring it would be nice if the state would kick in a little bit more money. The other angle I look at it as at from is is how much funding the county currently has available for services. Every year we're in budget talks, and every year uh, they're not offering us extra money to expand services. They're usually looking at us to cut services. So the state gave millions of dollars. Right, but we would have liked to have about triple that. Right. So hopefully exactly. we can keep pushing forward. This year we are going back and we're, we're basically saying it's the same number with a little bit of inflation. But at the end of the day too, what I'd love to be able to bring some data on is really what we can save them um, in prevention costs too, because right. that was significantly underfunded this time. You know, whatever the problem is, I feel like um, this community really comes together and it starts with good leadership and we couldn't do it without you. Thanks for having us, and, and we reciprocate that. Thanks for everything that you do for us and for the community.